Welcome to the presentation. My name is Benoit Matthew. I'm a musculoskeletal specialist physio and also work as an extended scope practitioner. Along with my training partner, Glenn Robbins, we conduct workshop with Physio UK, mainly focusing on injury prevention, work for uh, running injuries. Majority of my patients are uh, secondary referrals, dealing with overuse, overuse injuries with a large running uh, clientele. Over the years, working with the running population, there are a few myths which keep reoccurring. So this presentation is looking at the common myths associated with running injuries. There is some concern among runners that excessive running could lead to early osteoarthritis. Uh, there's some idea that it could fast track osteoarthritis of the hips and knees. Is that true? Is that really uh, the case? So last year, Williams had published this uh, large epidemiological review, looked at nearly uh, 74,752 runners with 7.1 years follow-up. And there was no link between running and the incidence of OA. In fact, it had a favorable effect. Running does reduce your risk of osteoarthritis. Uh, there's a strong link between age and obesity with osteoarthritis. One of the reasons running reduces osteoarthritis is regular runners tend to have low, a lower BMI and less obese. So that could be the relationship. So fortunately, running doesn't lead to osteoarthritis. There's a general assumption that running is very safe and low injury rate sport and injury prevention is not needed since running doesn't involve any equipment or complex routines. But is that the truth? Is uh, really injury uh, rates are low in running? If you are a regular runner, what I mean by regular runner, if you're running at least 20 miles a week, your uh, risk of injury risk is somewhere between 50 to 85 percentage, which could stop you from running. So it's quite high. There's been an explosion of research in running for the last 10 years. However, there's not been any much practical translation into decrease in injury rate. It still continues to be one of a high injury sport. Even in triathlon, which is a three discipline sport, running injuries lead uh, directly to about 68 percentage of the injuries. Let's look into some of the common um, sports which are considered to be high risk. General bodybuilding or traditional weightlifting uh, has a low injury risk of only one injury per thousand hours. The most common injury is shoulder. Activities like weightlifting, crossfit are generally much higher risk, especially powerlifting tends to affect the shoulder more. Um, but way up there which with the highest risk is running. And as you can see from two systematic reviews, um, the rate can be anywhere from 30 to 59 injuries per thousand hours. That is considerably high and which could surprise most people. Um, and the common region is, is tends to be knee, things like patellofemoral pain, ITV problems and hamstring issues. Um, things like ACL and meniscus are generally low rate. So definitely based on the epidemiological data, running a definitely high risk sport and there is clearly a room for injury prevention work. The next common belief is more running is better. Does it make you a better runner? Does it reduce your chance of injury? Um, is running five or six times a week better than two or three times a week? Does it make any difference on the injury rates? So that is an important question because I'm always asked by my, my patients how many days should I run? Uh, is too too much good or bad. So this is a very useful study which was done by um, Restolin, which was published last year in the Journal of Sports Medicine and Physical Fitness. It was a 12-month retrospective study which looked at nearly 446 endurance athletes. Um, they range from the age of 15 to 35 and they followed them through a year period. And and the conclusion of the study was 
endurance athletes who didn't have less than two rest days, who trained more than five days a week. Their injury rate were enormously high. We're talking about 5.2%, 5.2 times, which is around 520 times increased risk. So if you're going to train more than five days a week, you're more likely to end up having injuries and needing prolonged rehab rather than training. So five days a week tends to be the cutoff for endurance runners. Resistance training in runners is uh, often undervalued. Uh, people say it's not rugby or football where you need the strength and power. Uh, and sometimes some runners feel that it's not needed and you can slow down their uh, running form. But is that true? Um, I'm going to pick up a few key research in relation within strength training and runners. So uh, this is a, a large systematic review published in BJSM last, this year by Lorison, which has shown that the strength training can reduce over his injuries in athletes by nearly 15 percentage. Going into more runner-specific research, there's a good article by Snyder in Clinical Biomechanics, which shows that most of the changes by strength training in runners is by changing their biomechanical loading pattern. It's mainly neural-driven. It's just not about muscle hypertrophy. True hypertrophy only happens after the six to eight weeks, but most uh, benefits are happening within that time. So it could be because of the neural adaptations and improving the profiling. So um, th that's the key message which I tell my clients. It's, it's just not about getting big or strong. It's being more efficient and also improving your efficiency, which has been shown by Storen. Uh, you'll lose, you'll use less oxygen and you'll be a more efficient runner. And definitely having less injury is a bonus. BT has shown that there's a good systematic review in sports medicine that it definitely improves performance. Uh, so it's a win-win situation. You are not only going to reduce injury risk, uh, but also improve performance and reduce the load on your joints and tendons. And the last one for this presentation is um, I still there's a belief in some community in the running community that it can reduce uh, injury risk, but does it really? Does it really do that? There's. I've seen about three or four uh, recent systematic reviews. I've just put one here by Thacker 2003. There's no clear evidence that stretching prevents injuries. It has a role in, it might have a role in uh, rehab settings for um, specific clienteles, but in injury prevention uh, research, there is definitely, there's no clear evidence that it prevents injury. In fact, there are some articles which have shown that it can decrease performance. Uh, it might not be a good idea to do an extensive static stretching before a major event because it can decrease performance for at least 24 hours. So in conclusion, uh, there is no link based on research between osteoarthritis and running. There's a very high risk of um, overuse injuries in running, so it's important that patients are aware of that. And doing more doesn't really help. It might be uh, advisable to keep the running less than five days a week to prevent that high percentage of injury happening. Uh, there's more strength, more evidence for strength training than stretching and by including strength training you can reduce the load as well as protect from overuse injuries. So how do we reduce injury risk? So we follow a three-step process in our courses. Uh, first stage is screening. If you don't have good movement there is not much point in loading them and adding speed and power. So we have to have a clear pain-free functional movements. We do a variety of tests starting from the overhead squat, triple leg, a single leg squat, hop test and looking at functional test for the hip mobility and ankle mobility. So based on that we can identify the key movement dysfunction and once we have corrected them we go to the next stage which is about loading them in a safe manner and making it runner specific adding the strength training and adding the conditioning element is important. And last and the most important is to integrate that with running, looking at the running form, uh, making sure that is that they are efficient and also making sure that there's no overtraining. So this is the three step process which we use in our courses. Some tips for beginners, which I usually go through with most of my patients after my uh, rehab is to progress slowly, if, especially if you're a runner with less than one year experience. 
and avoid as we mentioned before avoiding avoid running for more than five days a week and uh, have at least include a day or two of strength training most shoes lose their shock absorption after about 250 miles so uh, some research have um, looked at that and sh- uh, recommended the JAMA came up with the prevention tips this year and one of the recommendation was to change your shoes every 250 to 300 miles I put all the key tips as well as some of the key subjective questions if you're dealing with runners in a PDF document for you to download. It's The link is at the bottom of this video. Are you a health professional who is involved with the rehabilitation of runners? Do you want to reduce the risk of injury and improve performance and help them to have an early return to running? In that case, you might be interested in our one-day practical course on developing clinical skills to integrate strength and conditioning looking at injury prevention work and also in advanced performance so we got an event coming in september um, in london and one in surrey in 25th of october so what do you be gaining from attending the course as i mentioned before we'll be looking at some of the key evidence-based functional screening to identify any movement dysfunction before we start loading and we'll be looking at high and advanced exercises Strength is just one component. We'll also be looking into practical exercises in plyometrics, dynamic warm-up, hip stabilization, uh, dynamic core uh, stability, as well as mobility drills. And the most important thing is how to link them all together in rehab in a clinical reasoning framework. Uh, we've done detailed interviews, uh, which is on the Physio UK website. If you want to have more information, you could uh, click this link. Thank you for your time and listening to this presentation. I hope you find it useful. Um, don't forget to download the free injury prevention tips for runners, which is given below. Thank you.